Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Hewitt. I head uh, clinical development for the Lanza Personalized Medicine Group. And I'm, today I'm going to be talking about our cocoon platform. The title of my talk is the cocoon platform for cell therapy manufacturing. We've crawled, we've walked, now it's time to run. So I don't think I need to review the fact that uh, cellular immunotherapies have reshaped the way that we are treating uh, patients in oncology. And a little bit over three years ago, we did see the first uh, Kimri, you know, first cell, cell therapy approval in Kimriah and how that these uh, medical breakthroughs were gonna change everything. And they certainly have. But shortly after those approvals, we already began to see that folks were concerned around the pricing of these therapies. And we began to think about ways to mitigate it. Certainly that is uh, the crux of that when cell therapies is going to be in manufacturing. And one of the risks that have been identified is the reliance on antiqu antiquated technology. So this comes back to how we walk and how we run and how we crawl. But ultimately, you know, recently uh, CRB, which is a firm which, many, which designs and builds clean room facilities, uh, put out a survey looking at the challenges on manufacturing cell and gene therapies. And a lot of the elements that uh, folks are looking for are elements that are embodied in a lot of the new closed automated platforms like the cocoon. One is process automation and the other is uh, closed cell processing systems. The closed cell processing systems and their adoption is likely going to drive um, many advantages in the field, one of which is the, to minimize or eliminate the, the risk of contamination, as well as uh, improving the speed at which you can move your therapy through development, the quality control systems which would be available, design flexibility, where we're talking about whether we're talking about the process itself or, or the, um, the facility that you're manufacturing in, and then certainly smoothing a path to regulatory approval. Additionally, in the next few years, we anticipate moving away from uh, more expensive clean room space, like the typical great ISO 7 or grade B that we're in now, to cheaper clean room space that would allow us to scale more efficiently to serve larger patient populations. So I don't think there's any uh, debate in the field around whether or not we need to integrate additional automation into the cell therapy manufacturing space, but there are different considerations about when you were going to implement it. And so we undertook some internal and external po polls to take a look at what people are thinking. So in the first one, we looked at uh, timeline to implement automated manufacturing and when that might be. And while there were a good number of people who said that they would implement it preclinically, the majority said, well, we'll wait until we're after in clinic. And there were various considerations why that would be the case. One is that you're looking for speed to the clinic. You just wanna go and you wanna see whether or not your therapeutic works. That's reasonable. Also, the upfront cost to move to an automated system is considered. But I think there are other considerations there, such as if your program is successful and you do need to move to an automated system, now you're gonna run into the time cost as well as the monetary cost to move to an automated system and perform a full clinical product comparability study. So you just need to keep that in mind as you're making those types of decisions. The key considerations for what people are seeking in, in an automated manufacturing solution, primarily platform flexibility. What is the ability for your platform to run my process? And more so, what is the ability for your platform to adapt to my process? Secondly is compatibility. Again, what is the, what is the ability for the platform to run the process? And secondly, combined within this is, is comparability. We don't want to produce a completely different product with different CQAs as we're moving from one platform to the next. Cell therapy processes are typically broken down into a number of discrete unit process steps. And they may vary a little bit from what's shown here on the screen, but this is how we break them down. And so there are a number of different boxes and different methods which are typically employed to move through these unit process steps. And what we aim to do is replace much of this within a, with a single solution, an end-to-end -end manufacturing solution, which is the cocoon. So the cocoon is comprised of three primary components. The first of which is the environmental unit. This is the pod or the white uh, pod that you see in a lot of the pictures if you search for the cocoon. Within the pod, we have a dual zone temperature control system. So at the top we have, uh, it's kept at 37 degrees. This is the culture zone. 
It's where all cells and any reagents, which are in active circulation with the cells are kept. And then at the bottom, we have a zone that's at four degrees. This is where reagents, consumables, and waste is kept. We have a built-in bi-directional peristaltic pump built in, which serves a new fluid throughout the cassette. And we also have actuators within the environmental unit which serve to open and close specific fluidic pathways within the cassette. We have PEG sensors, which provide real-time monitoring and PID control for pH, as well as dissolved oxygen. The second part of the cocoon is the single-use disposable, which is a customizable cassette. The cassette is closed. So when we talk about the cocoon being a closed system, it's the cassette whole portion that is closed. When you input cells and or reagents into the cassette, there is no mixing or contact with any other part of the cocoon. The cassette has an integrated portion which fits into the, the cold chamber of the environmental unit. What this allows you to do is internalize all of your processed reagents and consumables for a cell therapy manufacturing process into one form factor. We also provide process flexibility with the cassette. We have adapted it for use with suspension or, or uh, adherent processes. We have used these cassettes in lengthy and uh, gamma retro mediated uh, processes, as well as non-viral processes utilizing our 4D nucleofactor unit. The last component is, is the software. The software monitors and controls all of the process parameters. It houses all of the capabilities for protocol design as well as controlling the fluidic pathways. It's part 11 and NX11 compliant, providing full uh, product traceability and audit trails. And then we do uh, work with our clients as well as our collaborators to develop uh, customized electronic batch records uh, for each process. The last part is that the cocoon is fully qualified for clinical use. We have a CE mark for the EU. And we have a type 5 DMF on file with the FDA, which can be cross-referenced. As I mentioned in the prior slide, we have looked at other options uh, to, to virally mediated processes. And we have connected the cocoon with our 4D nucleofector in a modular fashion, which enables a closed automated method for non-viral cell therapy manufacturing. The reason we decided to do this is because while viral vectors are very good at what they do, the fact is that GMP viral vectors are expensive and time consuming to manufacture. So there are those that are seeking non-viral options. The picture on the right side of the, of the slide here is showing the, the setup as it sits at the moment. It's a modular connection that allows you to move cells back and forth between the systems in a closed aseptic manner. And the lower left uh, part of the slide is a table where we came up with uh, some acceptance criteria that we felt are clinically relevant based on experience with past processes. And on the right graph, we did uh, we showed that we can produce clinically relevant cell numbers, whether they're from frozen or fresh PBMCs. And on the far right graphs, we are showing that we can get transfection efficiency uh, at very high levels, above 50% on day one, and that the purity here is, is quite high at the end of the process on day 10. And this was done using a non-integrating uh, DNA plasma, including for GFP. We're certainly working in the clinical space as well. And we have a number of collaborations that are ongoing. Our lead one is with uh, Shiba Medical Center in Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, they have an ongoing phase two clinical trial using the CD19 CAR-T therapy. It's a basket uh, trial. So it's a, for any malignancy which expresses CD19. And so they were using an open manual process. We moved that process to the cocoon. And then uh, ultimately it culminated in us uh, dosing the first patient with a cell therapy manufacturer in the cocoon uh, middle of last year in 2020. And so on the right picture is a, a picture in the clean room of the therapy as it's being pulled off the cocoon and getting ready to be sent to the clinic. Because the SHIBA program was already in clinical trial, we had to undertake a clinical product comparability uh, study in the cocoon. So we took their original process, which was open manual. We converted it to the cocoon. We then ran comparability runs in the cocoon and then assessed whether or not it met all the CQAs and acceptance criteria to be considered comparable. The end result is that it was considered comparable. As you can see on the graphs on the right, we exceeded the required cell number for dosing. We showed similar transduction efficiency to the open manual control. And then we had comparable killing as well as functionality. 
Shiva is one, but many uh, of the programs that we are currently advancing with the cocoon. This is a few others that uh, we are collaborating with, both in industry as well as in academia. And then there are others which are certainly not uh, publicly disclosed at this time. I want to shift a minute now to uh, talk a bit about commercial cell therapy manufacturing. In the beginning, I talked about crawling, walking, and running. What we see as crawling is, is moving into a, a closed system because this mitigates your risk of uh, contamination. The second part, walking, is closed and automated. And in that way, you have a reduced risk for contamination, and you also have reduced touch points. But the last portion, the thing that's going to make us run, is scalability. How are we going to scale efficiently to meet commercial demand? If we look at Novartis as well as Gilead or Kite Gilead, you can see that while they're doing a great job of treating patients at the moment, they're still treating relatively small numbers of patients, around 3,000 per year. We decided to come up with a straw man where we looked at an autologous cell therapy manufacturing process using a manual or semi-automated process and looked at what it would require to do 10,000 patients per year. We're assuming a 10-day process. What this would mean is that each day you would initiate 30 new processes and you would end 30 processes. You would also be running 330 processes in parallel. And to do that, to sustain that workload and that, and that workflow, you would require 1,700 FTEs, which is a considerable amount of people and likely unsustainable. So you need automation to, for, for scale out here. We think we need to move away from these large castle-like facilities for cell therapy manufacturing where you require 100 plus thousand square feet of processing space to something more manageable, like what we're used to at 2,000 square feet. So how do we do that? Well, we have the cocoon tree. This is a way to vertically integrate uh, cocoons to increase your manufacturing density. They use all the same components as a, as a normal uh, benchtop cocoon that I've been showing you pictures of, except they're just arrayed vertically. And so what this allows you to do is put more processes into a given um, square meter of space. What we envision, you know, how we envision that at scale is something like this. You know, you have control rooms, which are monitoring uh, all of the cocoons, which are running uh, patient processes. And then ultimately on the right, we have mapped out in concept, uh, you know, a facility which would support this. So in this design, we have 40,000 patient doses being produced in around 27,000 square feet. And we feel that this is going to be key as we begin to move into more complex indications like solid tumors we're going to need to be able to scale more efficiently to meet that demand, as well as keep costs manageable so we can increase patient access to these potentially curative therapies. And with that, I thank everybody for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at Lanza. We're happy to have a discussion. Thank you.